How's everybody doing? Hey, let's start tonight with a few uh, prayer requests. I'd like first, first and foremost, to begin to remember uh, Brother uh, Jerry's brother Ben. Uh, he is in uh, he is in uh, Tanova North, which is in Powell, and uh, he's had a major heart attack. And uh, but I want us to remember him when we pray. Also, uh, remember uh, Sister Melissa. Uh, young blood and and brother Sam also continue to pray for them uh, and brother Wayne Woolard across the street. Anybody on this side over here got a prayer request before we get started? Somebody said, Pastor, remember Chris. Just, can, just pray. Just remember Chris. All right. Anybody in the middle got a prayer request this, uh, this tonight? Nobody. Y'all ain't got to pray about nothing. Nobody's got no prayer request. Everything's wonderful. <laughs> Go ahead, honey. Huh? Let's remember Brother Will. Amen. Continue to pray for him, Sister Karen. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's remember this. Somebody else in the middle. I'm moving, moving, moving. Cross them. Over here on my right, your left. Anthony, let's remember him. Heard he had an accident today. Linda, Camille, his son and his daughter. Anybody over here? Sister Lisa. Let's remember Brother Junior. Also, Brother Larry. Let's remember that. Amen. How about, brother? Uh-huh. Let's remember our Easter, yeah, our Easter hunt thing this Saturday. And uh, absolutely remember all the services we've got. Uh, well, actually, we're doing a 6.30. We're eating breakfast in between 6.30 and uh, the 8.15 service. Then 9.30, we're having small groups. And 10.30, we're having service. So we've got a lot going on this this coming weekend. Uh, let's also be much in prayer for Brother Larry Frazier. How many know who he is? Just remember Brother Larry. Uh, Brother Larry and I went and saw Brother Larry Monday and uh, talking with his family, and he's still no change. He's not doing any better. Let's continue to pray for him and the White Pine Church, amen, and all the pastors that are in our district, our state overseer, general overseer, and all their councils. Let's remember all of them. Continue to pray for them. Anybody else just that I missed? Did I miss anybody? Brother John? Josh? Josh Mills. Let's remember Brother Josh. Remember my son that's lost. Uh, behind me. Oh. Let's remember Jake. Let's remember Jacob. Let's also remember... Uh, Della, uh, I think little Mo's over the strap, and now Della and uh, Sis has got it. I think so. Let's remember. Let's remember them. Say it again, Sis. I couldn't hear a word of it. Kathy and Billy. Let's remember them. Amen. She's still having trouble kidney stones. Kathy is. Let's remember her. I've never seen anybody with kidney stones that bad in my life. Anybody else behind me? Nobody? Anybody? All right, let's stand. Hey, let's make our visitors welcome tonight. Good to have visitors with us tonight on a Wednesday night. I don't want to get into a debate with you, okay? So we won't have this debate, but I, I want to tell you my opinion, okay? I don't think that you can squeeze three days out of Friday, Saturday, early Sunday morning. I, I, I don't think you can do that, do you? It had to be. It either had to be. Uh, it, and let me tell you why I think that, okay? Because the Jewish people, everybody knows when the Sabbath is, right? But they had special Sabbaths according to what was going on. And they had a 360-day calendar also. So what I think is, I think it's tomorrow, amen, uh, tomorrow about 3 o'clock, amen, according to uh, 
I, you can't get three days from Friday to, su to Sunday morning early. There's just no way to get it out of that. But we, we celebrate good we, we celebrate Good Friday, amen, and rightfully we should, amen. This is the holiest, holiest week of all Christendom, and it's the fact that we celebrate this right here, that our God's alive. Everybody had a request in here tonight, amen, or everybody that did have requests, have, and, and we put our faith and hope and trust in a living God. He's not dead. He's not sitting on a shelf somewhere. We're not wondering if he hears us. We know he hears us. Amen. His ear is open to our cry every time. And you know what stops him from moving is our own faith. It, it just stops him. Amen. All he wants us to do is believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Amen. You know how you're going to get a prayer through? Just believe he hears you. Amen. The Bible said that you and I could come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find help in a time of need. How many tonight have a need? Raise your hand. Let's pray. Father, we bless the name of the Lord. So thankful, Lord, for what this week represents. And God, we thank you, Lord, that we know tonight that you are alive and well, and you're not somewhere in the by and by, but you live and you tabernacle on the inside of us. That this building is not the church, but we are the church of the living God because the living God lives in us. And God, I know you heard every request tonight. And God, I just combine my faith with their faith tonight, God, and we reach for you. And as we release these requests and we release this faith, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, release healing, release salvation, release deliverance. Move mightily, Lord, on every spoken. And God, there's needs in here tonight that are so deep that people wouldn't even speak them out of their mouth. I'm asking you to move, God, on those, on the unspoken and the spoken tonight. And God, we need you to touch us again. We need you to move by the power of the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. God, let the word go forth, Lord, with power and anointing. Let the worship be acceptable unto you tonight, God. And let us leave this house tonight saying it's been good, good, good to be in the house of the Lord. And everybody said amen. Brother Charlie's coming. Real fast, real fast. At this time, anybody 12 to 19 years old, we're headed up to the youth. If you guys want to go with us, 12 to 19, you're more than welcome to come and join us. God bless you.
been bought by the blood. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know we're celebrating Easter Resurrection Sunday. and You know, we were we taught on coffee and the word this morning. Our brother Roger did. If you missed it, you ought to go watch it. It was a good thing that he read. It was really interesting. It was a doctor's perspective on what happened at the cross and to show how Christ really died and to show it was just amazing. You just have to watch it. I couldn't recant all of it unless he can be, you know it by heart. No, he don't know my heart either, but, but y'all to go watch it. It was real good. But how many know without the cross, we'd all be lost? Amen. How many know that it's through the blood of Jesus Christ you are saved and only him alone? But through his death, and we're getting ready to celebrate his resurrection, how many know if he did not rise, Paul said, he said that we've wasted our time here. He said our faith was in vain. We should have just stayed at the house where it was warm and out of the rain. Amen. But because he's alive. I can live. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to see everybody out. Hey, Mount Bell, let's do this. Let's make our guests and visitors welcome. We're so glad you're with us tonight. So glad those that are watching Facebook and live streaming and all that good social media stuff. Sheriff, how many you got tonight? Sheriff's got 22 and he needs a little help. Amen. Somebody make him a 38 or 44 or something like that. <laughs> but let's, let's remember that. Amen. Hey, Oh, he's got some more. Good deal. How many is that? Can you can you estimate? Can you weigh it and tell me how much it is? <laughs> but it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Don't forget our Easter celebration. I know our pastor hit it's 2 o'clock Saturday. Bring everybody, invite everybody. they got a lot of good stuff going on. Y'all having class tonight? 3 to 11. 3 to 11 after worship. Follow those two ladies right there. Or at least Whitney. I don't know if Beverly you going with her. Beverly don't know if she's going or not. But anyway, follow those ladies. If you've got a child that's 3 to 11, they go over and then their family life center and have a, a class and a thing for them tonight. So uh, don't forget they had a meeting following worship, 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 worship. I can't even talk. Amen. But let's do this. Let's get ready to receive our tithes and offering tonight. Amen. How many know you can't outgive God? How I many God showed us the perfect gift? Amen. He showed us how to give when he gave his only son. Amen. And we're ought to give as he gave. Amen. So let's remember that. Let's stand. Let's get our tithes. Let's get our offering ready. Praise the Lord. And let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings, God. We thank you for the men and women who faithfully give to your kingdom, God. God, we thank you that you gave your only son that we might have eternal life, Father Lord. And Lord, we're coming today, God, bringing our tithes, bringing our offering into your storehouse tonight, Father God. And we ask you, God, right now to bless this gift, God, multiply for the use of your kingdom, God, that people will be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, healed, delivered, strengthened, encouraged, and set free in this house tonight, Lord, in ministries that go outside this house, Lord. And Lord, we ask you right now to bless the gift and the giver, Father Lord. And we ask it in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
know he's alive. Amen.
Miss Whitney and Miss Becky. All right, uh, our young people are dismissed to go with uh, these fine teachers right here that do a very good job. Amen. So good to see you out in the house of the Lord on a rainy Wednesday night. You know, if it's going to rain, children, it's going to rain on Sundays and Wednesdays. 
If it's going to snow, sleet, or hell, it's going to do it on Sundays and Wednesdays. It's uh, kind of that way, I guess. And, uh, you know, here's the thing I think about it is this right here. When you really make up your mind, you're going to come anyway. Amen. When you just love the Lord, you're going to come anyway. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 12. Amen. Remember, this Saturday at 2 o'clock, we're having an Easter egg float outside. Did you get that? Bring your scuba, de- scuba gears and all that. Amen. We're going to hide them in the water out there. And uh, it's, yeah, and baptize them and everything. Right? There. I mean, they'll get Easter eggs and baptized all at the same time. Yes, ma'am. 11 o'clock. You have how many eggs, sister? Over 30,000. So bring your babies, bring big baskets, like 55-gallon drums and scuba gear, and we're going to have an Easter egg hunt this coming Saturday. Amen. Uh, and let's, uh, let, hey, let's give our guests and visitors a good one. Welcome tonight. Amen. Good to see everybody out. Exodus chapter 12. Verse 1, when you have it, say amen. All right. Just letting the kids get on out through there a little bit here and back there. Verse 1, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth month of this month, they... In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto him take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. The lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, and they shall eat it. Eat it, eat not it, eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof and ye shall let nothing of it remain until morning and that which remaineth of it until the evening ye shall burn with fire and thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded with your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and ye shall eat it in haste it is the Lord's Passover for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment I am the Lord and the blood shall be a token for you upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Stretch your hand toward me and pray with me and for me. Father, we're so thankful for what this season represents. And God, we're thankful for the blood of the Lamb of God that's been applied to our lives. God, help me for the next few moments of time, God, to Preach your word, God. Just give me the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Lord, and give me revelation knowledge even as I stand here tonight, God. And God, let us leave this house with faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. God, I thank you for each and every one that's came out tonight, God. Please, God, add your blessings to the word of God in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You might be seated in the presence of the Lord, amen. What we're dealing with this week, amen, and what the Jewish community is dealing with this week is Passover. I never will forget uh, one time I was, uh, I, I'd had a lady that converted to Christianity and her husband was a Jew and I'd been after him and I'm still after him. I hope he's watching me tonight. Amen. He's a good friend of mine. He's coming in. And, uh, and, and his wife prayed and received Christ and she wanted to be baptized. And, and uh, after the fact, we did communion together. And I thought I had him because we did communion together. And I said, I said, I want to ask you something, dear brother. I said, if you don't believe in Jesus, Jesus, why did you take communion? He said, I didn't take communion. He said, I took the Passover. So he backed up a step on me. Amen. And, I, and you know something? I want you to understand that we are an extension of the Jewish faith anyway. Can, can anybody just concur with me and say, if it had not been for the Jews, amen, where would our Savior have came from? Amen. 
And the Passover, amen, was the time that God got sick of his people being run over. Uh, can anybody just look at me and give me a little bit of knowledge? I seen an article today. Can I just soapbox it just for about two seconds here? I seen an article today, and, and CNN has reported this. That they, they're saying now that there's just absolutely no way to tell the gender of a baby now when it's born. I said, what kind of idiots do we have, amen? That's not an ugly word, amen. They just... You got to be crazy if you can't tell the gender of a child when it's born. And we're living in a society that just readily accepts anything. I, I want you to understand with me tonight, when I found out, amen, I'm not saying COVID's not real. I do believe it's real. But I, when I found out it had a patent on it, it made me mad because some man, and they said it originated, the patent was bought, bought in the United States of America, and it made me mad, amen, when I realized that we've been played on that thing. And you know something, we're living in a society, amen, that they just push everything our way, and, and, and Americans are just taking it in, amen, and we're, we're headed quick toward the end of days amen uh, listen if you took the if you took the vaccine or you didn't take the vaccine if you want to take it take it if you don't don't take it but I want you to understand it's a conditioning amen for the end times that we see that's upon us and they're already talking about another pandemic so we ought to be able to call it a pandemic amen so evil days is sitting upon us amen and God at this time had got so fed up with the Egyptians and what they had done to God's people they were in bondage they were in slavery, amen, and God was trying to bring his people out. You know something, the sad thing about this story, there's, this is a wonderful story, and I can't wait to get into all the schematics of it, but the sad thing about this story is this right here, God got them out of Egypt, amen, and they walked 40 years in a wilderness around the same mountain, and God never got Egypt out of them. It's time, amen, that we get Egypt out of us, amen, it's time for you and I, listen to me. Listen to the news if you want to, amen, and watch the weather, amen, and leave the rest of it alone. It is a conditioning of the mind to drive you away, to put you in fear. Can I tell you, I had somebody tell me the other day, oh, I didn't see my grandbaby for a whole year. I said, hogwash, the devil is a liar, and I refuse to live in fear, amen, because of Egypt's bondage. Somebody ought to say amen to that. It's still America. I'll see my grandbaby if I want to. Amen. I'm not going to be told I can't come together for 4th of July. I'm sick of Egypt's bondage. I'm tired of it. You know what? The only way you can ever get free is this, is if you get tired of being bound. Amen. Can, can I tell you this? And I'm going to slow down a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm going too fast too soon. But can I tell you this? We were doing communion the other night, and it was just like a revelation hit me. Amen. We, we, we readily accept the fact that Christ's body was was broken for our healing, amen? He was bruised for our iniquities. He was the chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we're healed. But also in Hebrews, Hebrews said this, that he suffered in his body without the gate for our sanctification. He suffered in his body so that you and I could have power over our body. Somebody ought to say a little bit of amen to that. Amen. And, and, and God got tired of his children being in bondage. You know something tonight? I believe God's tired of his children being locked up. I, I'm, I believe God's tired of the enemy just coming in and taking over, amen, and just and, and causing his children to go out the ways of the world and sin and live. And I want you to understand God is calling for a church. He's coming back after a bride, the Bible said, that hath made herself ready. I don't know about you, amen, but I want to be that bride of Christ, amen, that has my lamp trimmed, amen, and burning. I want to be full of the oil of the Spirit of God when he comes, amen. Can I tell you, he didn't call me and you out of darkness so that you and I could go back in and live in sin and think we're going to heaven, amen. He called us out, brought us out with a strong right hand up out of the miry clay he brought me, amen. Set my feet upon a rock and established our goings. Is that you tonight? Amen, I'm going too fast. I apologize for going too fast. Verse one and two, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the, in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. That's what God said. God said to the children of Israel, he said, I'm gonna give you a brand new beginning. 
How many would just like to just start all over sometime? Just raise your hand. I mean, I mean, I mean, have you ever had one of them days where you just want to go back to bed and lay down and say, man, I, I think I'm just going to, we're going to stop right here. We're going to go back to bed, get up and try this thing again because I got it started off on the wrong foot. God said, I'm giving you a brand new beginning. Hey, it, it was almost like it's the same thing, amen, in Genesis chapter 8 as, as God did for Noah, amen. It was a brand new beginning. It was a fresh start. I believe that God wants to give the church a fresh start. Can I just tell you, I'm mad about a whole year full of mess that we put up with, amen. And I got mad out there preaching on a wagon out there. And I said, look, God give us this building and they're going to put me in jail before I go back out there and preach on another wagon, amen. God give us a building and we're going to use the building, amen. Somewhere in this life, amen, you've got to get a new start. Somewhere you've got to come to the place that you draw the line and say, I ain't never, ever going back to that mess again. Somewhere in this thing, you got to come. You got to come to yourself and say, "I'm in the hog pen, but I'm gonna get myself up and I'm gonna head toward the Father's house because in my Father's house, there's plenty to eat there. There's plenty of refuge there. It's time that the church has a new beginning. It's time to restart this thing and say, if there's anything like serving God, I'm gonna serve Him with all of my heart." I didn't give him part of my heart. I didn't start out to give up and throw in the towel. I gave him all of my heart almost 30 years ago. And I didn't start out to quit. I started out to win. And I'm holding on. Amen. How many holding on tonight? Wouldn't it be nice just to, wouldn't you like to be Marty McFly? Wouldn't that be cool? I, I posted this thing. and It had a picture of this restaurant. It was talking about all them old cars from the 50s. If you look through there, there's a DeLorean sitting right in the middle of it. Did anybody see that? You probably didn't want to, some of you kids don't know what a DeLorean is. Hey Amen. But wouldn't you like to have a DeLorean and just, poof. I don't know if I'd want to ride that kooky professor dude or not, but I'd like to go poof, just straight back. And I'd like to go back, and I, I think I could fix some things in my mind. And then my mind goes here. You know what? All those bad experiences in your life up until this point has molded you and shaped you and taught you how to walk with God now. Amen? You know something? Listen, if, if you're walking along, amen, and you trip and fall, amen, then, then the next time you come down that path, you're going to be looking for that which made you fall. So I wouldn't take nothing for the things that I've learned amen, through my life, but I would like to have a do-over sometimes. I'd like to just start it all over and say, just me and you, God, when life was simple, I, I, I remember when I got saved, nothing mattered but God. You know something? You are the luckiest people in the world. You get to come to church and sit there. You get to sit there and look back and judge and you say, well, you know, he preached better Sunday than he did tonight and I've heard him do a lot better you know, on a scale of one to ten, he probably did a four or five. You're the luckiest people in the world. I remember those days when I would come to church and just sit down and eat to my full. Amen. But I want you to understand, life got complicated and the call of God came into my life and it got harder and harder and harder and the grace got greater and greater and greater. And sometimes I think I'd like a do-over, but sometimes I think I'll just hold on to right where I'm at and see what God is going to do in all his glory. Amen. Right in the middle of the year, God gave them a, a, brand, a, a brand new start. Amen. Do you know you can have a new start tonight in the Lord? It really don't matter what you've done either. God will let you start all over again. I, I don't want you to raise your hand, but just think in your mind how many times that that thing come and got you and drug you off again and again and again and you repented and you said you'd never do it again and you did it again and then you repented and you, you said I'll never do it again and you did it again and God just gave you a do over every time until you finally got it you know and that's the thing that God don't allow he don't want us to judge people because see what we don't see is the problems that they walk through we don't know the circumstances that were created in their lives to cause them to fall that deep and that hard amen all we know is we've been forgiven and we don't want to talk about those kind of things but we sure do like to talk about them that fell 
fail publicly. You know a lot of us have failed privately and nobody knows it. But I want you to understand, we ought to be, we ought to be more kind to those that fall publicly and consider our own self. Somebody say amen. It really, it, it really don't matter. What you've done, God will give you a new beginning. Right in the middle of the year, they got a brand new start. And the beginning speaks of salvation. Colossians 2, 13 and 14 said, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwritings of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his. It, it was really my cross, but he took my cross, and he nailed it to his cross. Amen. What's it trying to say? It's trying to say all those things that I've been guilty of and you've been guilty of, he took it to the cross, amen, and paid sin's penalty, Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, what was the gift of God? It was hanging on a cross of Calvary. That's what we're celebrating this week. We're celebrating the fact that our God loved us enough to send his son to a cross of Calvary and pay my sin debt. I don't know about you. You might have been a good moral person. I pray you was. I thank God your testimony is that God kept you out of the world. But friend, mine's different from yours. Amen. I want you to know that mine is that God came and got me out of a dark place and raised me up and breathed life into me and saved me anyhow. I come from the wrong side of the track and he loved me. I was a vile sinner and cussed his name, but he loved me. Amen. I want you to understand. I did about all of the bad things in the book that it says you can't go to heaven for. And he loved me anyway. And if he loved me then, he sure loved me now. Amen. Woo. Think about that blotting out the handwriting. Do you know there was a book being kept on you? And a book being kept on me? That was against us. It was all the evidence they needed to put me and you in hell. And Jesus blotted it out. Washed it away with his blood. Let me bring it into where we're at. Verse 3 said, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying that in the tenth day of this month that you shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a an house. And if the house will be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to the eating <clears throat> shall make your count for the lamb. Can, can, I, can I just slow down right here just for a second? And I believe you're the backbone of the church and I believe you get it and I think I've got some people that are beginning to come around to my persuasion maybe a little bit. But the problem that we have in Pentecostal church is not that we don't have the spirit. Because we do have the spirit, amen. We was right in the middle of doing communion. Young man right here tonight, he gave his heart to the Lord Sunday night right in the middle of communion. I mean, God was moving in the house. It's, there's no lack of the spirit in Pentecostal church, amen. There's no lack of the healing touch, the, the power of God to deliver, to set the cat. There's no lack of that whatsoever in the house of God, amen. The, the problem that we have is, the problem we have is we don't want to share the lamb. I'm, I'm going to slow down. I'm, maybe I'm not talking to nobody here. Maybe I'm talking to them on the, all them church members that laid out tonight. It's 17 drops that keeps the Church of God folk out of church. So they got them tonight so they didn't have to come. And a whole bunch of some of our churches of God in our district shut down tonight. <laughs> Golly. I, well, you know how it works. But anyway, but they don't want to share the lamb, amen. See, this, this is a thing that I don't see. I've never seen, amen. I've even tried here. We can't get it going, but we're going to get it going. I've never seen a productive ministry going out to reach the lost. What would they be doing? They'd be sharing the lamb. Help me now. I mean, I'm, I mean, I want you to understand with me, amen. I, didn't, I don't want you to come and feel good about not testifying of the great and mighty things that God has done. The Bible said, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Why would you want to talk about his wondrous works? It's so that those that don't know him will be able to see that this God that we serve is a great God. He's an awesome God. He's a God full of mercy and grace that takes care of his own children, amen. And it's time 
time that you and I began to share the lamb. I don't know how else to put it, amen. I don't know what else to say about it. I don't know how to make Pentecostal people get a burden for the lost. We don't have it. Listen, leave the Leave the good Baptist people alone. I love them people. I preach for them a lot. Amen. Leave them alone. Amen. They know more about Acts 1 and 8 than we do. Amen. We think it's for power. Amen. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come on. Woohoo! Yes, sir. We love it. But they know what the power's for. The power is to go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth, and tell the story, share the life. Lamb with your neighbor. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get real. I'm gonna get real close and personal. I'm coming into the kitchen. I'm making myself a bologna sandwich. You like bologna? Man, I like it, don't you? Fried and any way you want to fix it for breakfast. You ever have it for breakfast? But uh, seriously, can, can we just talk for a second in this dark hour? It's getting dark, children. Now listen, this, these babies that's coming up in here, we're telling them and we're teaching them that you're born with the gender God gave you. But there's a generation of kids that's going to school right now. Did, I, read, I read an article. Please, somebody come get the mic from me. I'm, 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 listen, I don't know if I'm anointed or mad about it. I read an article today. And it made me want to barf. It made me want to throw up a little boy, a little boy. He's three years old. And he can and look, look, he's three years old. And he, he has he has a disability that he can't speak. He can hear, but he cannot speak. And they were they were talking to him about buying this for little boys. And he sign languaged them at three years old and said, No, no, no. I identify as a little girl. Tell me we're in the name of good sense did that baby hear a trashy mess like that amen that is puked up out of the pits of hell amen and I'm mad about it amen and I want you to understand that you and I must go get the laws and tell them God made you the gender you are and he loves you just like you are and he'll save you and change you and help you somebody ought to praise the Lord right there I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to get on a soapbox. But if you have any confusion, go to the bathroom. It's in the back, take a peek, come back, you know what you are. I mean, I'm, I, I don't know how to, and listen, I'm just telling you, I would absolutely, I'd absolutely, I'd have a problem with somebody trying to tell my little grandbaby that. They better not tell it around my baby, not around me. It's so ridiculous. And we are the only institution in the world that's, put here by the Lord and is set up to go get the lost. And Pentecostal people, I love you. But have you ever won one person to the Lord? Back in the day, I remember back in the day, I, I would come up, I'd be so excited, I'd invite people. I'd come out of the Baptist church. I thought everybody was inviting people to church and telling them what God did in their life. I'd invite people and they would come and they would come to the altar and they'd get saved. And I'd tell some of the, some of the people I went to church with, I'd say, so and so got saved. They'd say, we'll see. We'll see. And let me tell you this. What makes heaven rejoice ought to make the house of God rejoice. Help me just a little bit. I mean, the Bible said there's rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents. How is it that we don't even have time to see if anybody gets saved? We're trying to beat the Methodist to Shoney's on Sunday morning. Don't have time to hang around to see who really got saved. I want you to understand it is our job, whether we do it or not, whether I ever communicate it right into the Pentecostal churches or not, it is our job, and we will stand before God if we, uh, if we don't share the Lamb. We will give an account to God for the people that God puts in our lives. And he expects us to talk of all his wonders. Work. He expects us to love the unlovable. He expects us to share the lamb with everybody. Amen. Verse 5. I ain't going to promise I won't go back to that, but I'm on verse 5 right now. Your lamb shall be without blemish. It's tops and shadows. I mean, they're all through the Bible. The lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. It's prophetic of Jesus, John 1 and 29. The next day, John says, Jesus coming unto him. 
and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Jesus was mine and your Passover lamb, amen. The plague was coming, amen. Hell was going to be my home, amen, and God had another plan. The Bible said in Revelation, if you will, the Bible said, and I can prove to you, I believe this world was, re I believe it was built backwards. So, I, and I know a lot of people are acting like it is, but I really believe that it was. I believe God went into the future and began to build this world from the, from the end all the way back to the beginning. How can you prove that to me, preacher? In Revelations, the last book, in the Bible, in Revelation, it said he's the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. God had a plan, amen, and he was giving us a type and a shadow of the plan. He's gonna be a first yearling, amen. He's gonna be a lamb, well, it's gonna be a male. He's gonna be without spot or without blemish, amen. I was in, we were in Israel this past year, yeah, and, and I won't even tell you what some of the people of the natives there had to say about him. They they wanted to say he was illegitimate. They wanted to say his mother was a prostitute, amen. And they said a lot of other good things about him, amen. But I want you to know tonight, amen, his mother was not a prostitute and he was not illegitimate. He was and he is the spotless lamb of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have to understand with me the symbolism that we're dealing with now because God was bringing his people out of Egypt's darkness. He never meant, I hope some of my hyper-Calvinist brothers are watching, he never meant, they want to get so technical with me and I hit them with such common sense they can't refute me. He never meant for you. Amen, he never meant for me. Amen, he never, he never meant for us, for him to open the door for us to get out of Egypt's bondage and to stay in the middle of it. He never saved me in my sins. He saved me from my sin. He's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He didn't save me so I could live like the devil and tell everybody I'm going to heaven. He saved me and brought me out so the world could see that he loved everybody. Somebody give him praise. 1 Peter 1, 18, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, and from your vain conversation, received by the traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, look, 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 watch, watch, as of a lamb, without blemish, without spot. Verse 6, it said, and you shall keep it up unto the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Do you know that speaking of Christ's death, when he died, the blood has been shed. The sacrifice has been made. I, I, I don't want to mess you up on Good Friday, amen, but it's really, it has to be Good Thursday. There's no way out of it. It has to be. If you just go in and look at the calendars and back up and look, amen, and study, amen, they, they had Sabbaths that was not on Saturday, amen. I don't like to be in Israel on the Sabbath. I hate it over there. You can't get on an elevator, every elevator. Nobody even touch an elevator. They won't turn on the light. They won't do nothing. And I mean about on Friday afternoon, about 3 or 4 o'clock, they start shutting everything down. And on on Saturday, if you're in a motel and, and, and you're on the 150th floor or whatever and you're trying to get out of there and you're on the top, that dude's going to stop on every floor because they will not, they, 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 won't, they, they won't even hit an elevator button, amen. On, on, they won't turn on no lights, they won't cook no food, they won't do anything like that, amen. But I want you to understand with me, amen, that there was, they, they had special Sabbaths within the Sabbaths, amen. And tomorrow, amen, it should be good Thursday if you really look at it correctly, amen, to get the three days in there, amen. But it was speaking of the sacrifice that, was, that had been made. Verse 7, and you shall take the blood and strike it on the two sides of the post and the upper door post of the houses wherein shall you eat it. Threshold covenant. Watch this, amen. Watch this. That threshold covenant is this, everybody that comes underneath my roof that walks through the threshold of my house, I should be sharing the lamb with them. Help me somebody. How easy can it be, amen? It's a threshold covenant and it's saying that everybody that walks under the roof of my house should be protected by the blood of the lamb of God. Help me tonight, amen? I know, I know, I know I'm a little bit rough tonight, but listen, to me just for a second. He 
they placed the blood up the sides, across the top, down the other side. And there was a reason why, the reason why to my good Calvinist brothers, the reason why I wasn't put on the floor, amen, it's because we're never to tread underfoot the blood of the Lamb of God. We're never to go back and partake of those things that we once was bought from and brought from. We're never to go outside of the grace of God and live in sin again. Amen. Amen. Notice God didn't say put the blood on the threshold. God, the blood should be never trampled. Watch this, Hebrews 10, 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith we are sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite under the spirit of grace. Those who reject the blood of the new covenant will suffer, will suffer a worse punishment than those who rejected Moses' law back in the day. Amen. Just as those who reject the law suffer death without mercy, there is no mercy for those who die rejecting Jesus. Jesus is the only way to heaven. If you believe that, you ought to say amen. Verse 12, chapter 12, verse 12. So, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. You know what God really said right there? He said, I'm about to show them who the real God is. I won't slow down here just for a second. I really don't know what God's about to do in this country. But I believe with all my heart, he's about to show some people in Washington who the real God is in this country. I believe it with all my heart. Hey, listen, I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat. I'm a conservative Christian. Amen. I don't want to be associated with the Republicans anymore because they're in, they're in on it with the rest of them too. Amen. Watch, 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 watch. It says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast against all the gods. He said, there's not going to be anybody, there's not going to be any doubt when I come through who done it. When he comes through this country, and you watch and see, amen, you watch. When he comes through, there won't be any doubt to them or anybody else, amen, who executed judgment upon the mess that's going on in our country right now. Hey, listen, I, I got a word for you, and I don't care if I cut it off. They cut it off if they want to, amen. I don't know my soul to Facebook, no way. If they cut it off, we'll find us another platform to get up on it. And I want you to understand something, amen. Listen, I want you to understand why they're so, they're so bent on leaving that border open. Did anybody see, that? somebody sent me a thing the other day and, and it was it was one of our congressmen standing down there and they were hollering across the river at them and making fun of them because we got people up there that's changed the law and it don't have anything to do with equality. It don't have anything to do with things like that. All it has to do with is this, five to seven thousand dollars a piece for little old children that they can bring across and bring it into this pedophile mess that's going on in the United States of America. That that, that lady that preached for us, amen. Sister Jenny had preached the other night for us. That little boy, her grandson, sitting right here on the front row. Two men pulled up in a van and tried to get him in the van just the other day. And Brother Gary, her husband, run him down and got their tag number. I'm telling you, 800,000 kids going missing every year in this country alone. And they don't find a hair and they don't find a bone. Somebody knows where it's going. And I want you to understand there's a lot of gods that's being worshipped all over this world, amen. But there's one God that's about to speak up in this generation and he's going to show them who is God and he's going to show them that they can't get away with this stuff much longer. Somebody believes that I'll give God some praise. It's time, amen, that Christians stand up and say, no, sir, listen to me. I want you to know something. I hate politics, amen. I despise it. But how can you vote for somebody that says it's all right to kill little children before they're even born? How can you vote for them people? How? You can't. Amen. Amen. For I'm going to pass, I'm fixing to show him, he said. I'm going to show him who God really is. He's going to execute judgment on their gods. He said, I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when you see the blood, or when I see the blood, 
I'll pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Can I tell somebody there's divine protection? There's a barrier between us and the devil. Do you know that? You know that? There's a barrier he can't cross. He, he can't cross. He can't, he can't. That's why he tries to trip Christians and get them out back into sin. Because he can't cross the bloodline. He wants them to tread underfoot the blood and follow him. He, he knows he can't come across the blood. He, he can't get through to you. There's a barrier that stops him in his tracks, amen, because he knows and understands that this blood is what paid sin's debt. This blood is what set you and I free. This was the blood, amen, that caused us to become new creatures in Christ Jesus. This was the blood that deemed us not guilty, amen, in a court of law. You know heaven is a courtroom, right? Amen. And we have the judge, which is God the Father, amen. And we and we have the prosecuting attorney, which is the devil. And our, our attorney at large is Jesus. Christ and I want you to understand with me when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him when the enemy comes in to make his accusations somebody said oh I don't know if he does or not he did it amen in the days of Job when he went before the throne of God when the sons of men came he came and, and, and beckoned with God to lift the hedge remember that and I just happen to believe that sometimes when the enemy comes in amen to make his case against me that my attorney at law his name, he's very large. His name is Jesus. And my attorney at large looks to the judge of all judges and says he is not guilty according to the blood of the lamb. My God. I want you to understand tonight there's divine protection in the blood. Without the blood, destruction is inevitable. God, good works will not save us. Being a good moral person will not save you. Keeping the traditions of men will not save you. Joining the church will not save you. Being baptized will not save you. Only those who are washed in the blood of the Lamb will escape the destroyer. Notice the Lord passed by to see what the blood was applied. You ever thought about it? I tell my staff all the time, I say, every service, but more so on Sunday morning, I said, heaven and hell both come in to the room, and I'm the mediator between heaven and hell. And I can say the wrong thing and send them the wrong way. I can say the right thing and send them toward the blood. But have you noticed this? That the Lord came through. And, 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 and watch this. Tonight, if you're watching my Facebook, and us that's sitting in the congregation tonight, he's coming through tonight. And he's looking. And, 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 you, and you know something? He knows what sins is already under the blood. He knows what's not under the blood. It should be under the blood. All you have to do is repent, turn from it, ask him to forgive you, and be washed away. Amen. Notice the Lord passed by to see where the blood had been applied. And when he walks through the aisles of this church, especially on Sunday morning, he knows where the blood's at and he knows where it's not. And can I just tell you this? Amen. I've been around too long. I, I really have. I've been around a long time. Amen. And I've seen too much. And I, I wouldn't even want you to see some things I've had to see and deal with things I've had to deal with inside church and people that you wouldn't even think about. Amen. I, I wouldn't want you to know some things that I've seen in, in 17 years of pastoring, almost 28 years of coming to this church right here. Amen. But, but I want you to understand something. Amen. God knew before I knew that the blood hadn't been applied. Amen. I want you to understand there's a radical essential difference between us and the, right, uh, the, the righteous and the wicked. There is, a, there is a difference to those who have the blood applied. Can I tell you, you can't fix somebody if the blood ain't been applied. Amen. I don't care how kind you are, how, smile, how much you smile, how much you give them, how much you do. I, I, got, I, I know some preachers that I don't think the blood's been applied to their life. I, I know some pastors right now that I really wonder if the blood has ever been applied to their life. Because, see, it's not about, amen, the abundance of people that hear the gospel and souls being saved anymore. It's about the abundance of money they can cram in a bank and holler 
hey, look what I got and look what I bought. Amen. Can I just tell you this? All those things are going to burn. And the only thing that's going to stand in the end of days is, is the blood of Jesus applied to your life tonight. Amen. I believe that many times the destroyer has came my way and your way. And the Lord Jesus said, you can't touch him because of the blood. There's a barrier between us and the devil. And it's the blood of the darling son of God. The devil can't cross the bloodline. And you know what you ought to do? You ought to plead the blood over your marriage. You ought to plead the blood over your home. You ought to plead the blood over your children. You ought to plead the blood over your automobiles before you get in them. Amen. You ought to plead the blood over your ministry. Amen. You ought, to plead, you ought to plead the blood over your loved ones that are lost. If you got a worst enemy, you ought to plead the blood over that worst enemy because you don't want them going to hell. I, I plead the blood over you all the time and over the church all the time when I'm praying and I'm always praying, Lord God, give them power over sin. Oh God, lead them not into temptation. God, keep them from the things of the world and give them a hunger and a heart for you and a love for you that won't let them go back out. Now I'm always praying, Lord, save their children. Lord, save their grandbabies. God, bless them on their jobs and God, if you take them out of that job, give them a better job so they can provide for their family. God, put a hedge around their homes and around their, their automobiles as they travel. Always, always, always pleading the blood of Jesus. Amen. See, when I used to sit back there like you, all I had to do was worry about me and me and my little few right there. But now that I'm up here, man, it's got bigger. Amen. And it's even got bigger than this. We got all these other churches. Amen. And pleading the blood over pastors and over their congregations and, and over their fellowships. Amen. And people that are not in this denomination, and Baptist preachers and Methodist preachers and people that I know and Catholic people that I know that love God. Amen. That serve the Lord. And you got. And you know, I want you to understand. It takes the blood to keep the devil out. It takes the blood, amen, to wash away your sins. It takes the blood to protect you from the destruction that's headed to this old world we're living in. Amen. And tonight, I just come tonight to tell you that you can have a brand new beginning I come to tell you tonight that there's protection in the blood see see think, think with me just for a second to us the, the for us the most difficult thing that we could think of is having a family or friend that passed away but in reality if they've been washed in the blood they're forever reserved in heaven for us till we get there we, we, we act like that's the end. Well, they died. No, they did not. Listen, I got, I, you know, I, I got family and friends there. Amen. Most of my, about all my family died in 2015. Everybody's near and dear to my heart left this world in 2015 almost. Amen. And my family, amen. But don't you know, I didn't lose nobody. Amen. They didn't. Somebody said, well, you preached a funeral. Well, I know I did, but they didn't die. Amen. Because Jesus said in John chapter 11, he said, if a man believe in me, he said, he'll never die. And then he asked a question. He said, believe us thou this. I come by to tell you this. Amen. There's a lot worse things in this life than death. Amen. When the destroyer is turned loose in your life because the blood has not been applied, that's worse. Amen. I would rather be covered in the blood of the lamb laying, amen, in a deep, dark grave, amen, than walking around in this world without my mind, without my senses, serving the flesh and serving the devil and waiting on the destroyer to come. I come to tell you tonight, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because the blood has been applied, amen, I and you get to go to heaven one day after one. Because of the blood, when he sees the blood, in America, he's going to pass over his children. If you believe that's right, give God a good praise. Now, now, now you ready? Now, this is what. I'm, I'm, I'm fixing to engage us in this tonight. If I had... Remember that, old, remember that old joke they told about the shouting powders? Remember that? If I had some burden powders. They told that old joke. Said these two ladies want to go down to the tent meeting. Pentecostals was down there having church. The pastor says, no, don't go down there. 
I said, they've got them shouting powders. They'll throw them on you and you shout all over the place. Remember that joke? It had been raining that day and they sitting and they decided to go anyway. And they sitting in the back of the tent and a cool breeze blowed through and raised up the tent and the water poured down their back. And one jumped up and looked down and said, oh God, they throwed it on us in water farm. Remember that one? If, if, I had, if I had some burden powders tonight, I'd, I'd cover you in them. Because children of God, we don't even know the dangers. Hey, I, I don't care if they take me off. I, I, don't, I don't care. Bill Gates said, the guy who has no degrees in medicine, who's paying for all the vaccines for everybody, Bill Gates said the next pandemic is going to be worse. Letting us know they made this one. They're going to make another one. And we're living in some dark, dark times. And can I just tell you this? It's time that you learn to plead the blood over your family, over your marriage, over your home, over your job, over your babies, over your grandbabies. Because when the Lord sees the blood, you know, I got one right now. He's crazier than a run over coyote. He'd be, what, 21 this year? I love him, but he's crazy. He's crazy, man. He's running. Preached his first message when he was 15. He's like a he's like a ringneck pheasant. As soon as his feet hit the ground, son, he broke and run. And you know something? He don't know it. But he can't stay in that mess he's in. You know why? You know why? Because daddy's been pleading the blood over him. And I'm gonna tell you something. Jesus, can I tell you something? Jesus talks to him when he lays down at night. You know why? Because I, I talk to Jesus and Jesus and I plead the blood and I, and, I, and I make decrees over his life. I say, I decree he's righteous seed. God, you said if I'd serve you, you wouldn't, that you'd save me and my household. I decree it over him. You, 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 you got to learn how to do that. Stand, in, stand, stand with me, stand with me, stand with me. Now, here, here's what we're going to do tonight as they come to the music or whatever they're going to do. Listen, and I, I'm going to be real respectful. You, I'm not saying you have to come to this altar to get the answer. But it's a wonderful thing just to gather around the altars of God and begin to call out our family and our friends and our neighbors and begin to plead the blood over our marriage, over our home, over our ministry. And I'm, I'm opening the altars tonight for you to engage God because I want you to understand he's looking in this earth right now. The Bible said that he goes to and fro in the earth to, to show himself strong. And can I tell you this? If you and I get in these altars and we call on the Lord and we begin to plead the blood, when the destroyer comes, he'll pass over for your sake. Because he gave us a promise in Acts chapter 16 if, uh, that we could be saved in our family too. Would you come? And just begin to plead the blood over that family member that's lost, over that child, that grandchild, over that friend, over that marriage, over your home, over your car, over your job. He said, when I see the blood, I won't let the destroyer come. Would you come? Everybody knows somebody and he's praying for tonight. Hey, this is the holiest week of all right here. They call it Holy Week. Tonight. And you, you make it an altar right there where you're at if you want to. If my marriage is in trouble tonight, I'd come down here and plead the blood. I'd say, oh, God, I plead the blood over my marriage. My children, Lord, I, per, I plead the blood over Caleb tonight. The blood is against the destroyer. The devil would have already killed him, but the blood's against him. The blood is against the devil tonight. Can we pray, Father, right now in the name of Jesus? I haven't done the best I know, Lord, to communicate what you gave to me today. God, I just pray, Lord, that our faith would grow, that we understand that we have power. That the power of life and death is in the tongue, and we can plead the blood over family members and friends and over marriages and homes and over jobs. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. God, 
go get our lost. Lord, don't let the destroyer have our family members that are lost. God, we're serving you, and you said we could have our family. God, we're not asking you for something you didn't say. We're asking you for what you said. God, confirm your word in our families. God, let our families, as we plead the blood over our children and grandchildren and husbands and wives and cousins and aunts and uncles and all over our parents that are lost, God, I'm asking you, Lord, to confirm by begin dealing with them and draw them in to altars of repentance, Lord, before it's eternally too late. God, I'm asking you, Lord, for that marriage and the Lord that's in trouble. God, that you would speak one more time in this marriage. I plead the blood, Lord, over a specific situation that's near into my heart tonight, God. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, Lord, over their lives, over their marriage, over their home, over their children, God. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to give us a great harvest in these dark hours that we're living in. And God, that we would be a beacon of hope and light and truth right here at Mount Bell. That our babies, Lord, that wouldn't be tainted by the things of the world. God, I'm asking you, O oh Lord, to speak in this day, in this hour, in a voice of clarity, God. Lord, I plead the blood over our children that are right here. They're going to, going to these pagan schools, God, that's teaching such nonsense as being taught. Lord, I ask you, oh God, that you'd move mightily, Lord, and move on our children, God, and keep them from the evils of this world. I'm not asking you, you pray, Jesus, and that you, you prayed that, you, that we wouldn't be taken out of the world, but we'd be kept from the evils of the world. Lord, keep our babies from the evils of this world. Lord, if you tarry and you don't come for another thousand years, let somebody stand and preach the truth and tell what the Word of God says. I plead the blood, God, over Mount Vale Church over this ministry, over the good people of God that come here and all those that are faithful to watch and people in other, in other countries and other states all over that are watching these broadcasts. God, I plead the blood over their family, over their marriage, over their home, over their jobs, over their finance, over their children, grandchildren. God, move, Lord. Put a barrier between the destroyer and their loved ones and their family and friends. God, I thank you for this little word tonight. I thank you, Lord for the moving of your spirit tonight. Thank you for the word of God that's forever settled in the heavens that tonight we put our faith and our hope and our trust in what Jesus did on a cross of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you are doing, God, in this house. I've been changed, redeemed, and made
praise the Lord. Can somebody give the Lord a praise tonight? Amen. Amen. Those who want to continue to pray can pray. How many how many's glad to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Woo! Come on. <laughs> my, 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 my. Thank God he passed over me. Amen. Amen. If you'll stand, we're going to dismiss the prayer, but real quick before I forget, do this. Pastor's encouraging us to share the Lamb. Invite somebody for Saturday. Invite somebody for Easter services. Invite somebody to the house of God. If you, I tell people all the time, you, you really have the ability to share the gospel, but even if you can't at moments do that, at least invite them. If you don't have time, invite them to the house of God. Amen. Amen. So if you'll stand, Brother Dylan's going to dismiss us in prayer this evening. Yes. <laughs>